using the TI Inspire CAS handheld. Video 2 Sketching Graphs with CAS Part 2 Finding Key Points using Analyze Graph So now that we know how to get the CAS to actually draw the graph, we want to learn how to be able to identify key features of a graph because at the end of the day we're using our CAS to sketch the graph in order that we may then draw that graph on paper. So we need to be able to find key points such as x-intercepts, y-intercepts, stationary points, um, etc. So I've drawn a simple parabola x squared minus x minus 6 and now we want to look, have a look at what our options are in terms of um, finding key points on this graph. So I'm going to press menu and you'll see number 6 is analyze graph and we get the following options. Now probably only be options 1 to 5 that you'll use uh, often. Um, intersection I find I don't tend to use that often um, but that's there as well and we'll talk about that a little bit. So for this particular parabola I'm interested in x-intercepts and I'm interested in a minimum turning point so we're going to be focused on those here. You'll notice um, so for obviously to find x-intercepts I'm going to choose um, number 1 which is 0 and zeros are another way of referring to x-intercepts they're talking about where the function is equal to 0 so when I do this um, it's going to ask me for a lower bound and you'll see also that attached to my cursor is a vertical dotted line so what it wants me to do is to move my cursor so that it is somewhere below the x-intercept that I'm trying to identify. It can only identify one x-intercept at a time so we'll just look at this one on the left hand side first and I'm going to, once I've moved my dotted line so it's somewhere below or to the left of that x-intercept I'm going to click and now you'll see it's asking me for an upper bound so I'm going to move my cursor and now it's creating this shaded area so basically I'm creating a sort of window in which um, the CAS needs to look for that um, zero or x-intercept and you'll see it's identified the x-intercept now that I've highlighted across so I'm going to click to OK my upper bound and now it will actually place a point on my graph with the um, coordinates so that will remain there so um, I don't forget what that point is You'll also notice that the coordinates don't always appear in a location that you would like them to. Um, so again, we talked about moving around labels in the previous video. So you're just going to go up to the label till you have an ha open hand. You're going to click and hold with your touchpad until it closes. And then you're going to be able to move that um, label. Click again to drop. Um, and you can move your point to somewhere a bit more convenient. So we need to repeat that same process for the other x-intercept. So menu 6, 1 asking for a lower bound so somewhere to the left I'm going to click somewhere to the right click again and there I have my other zero or x intercept the other thing I'm interested in here is that minimum turning point so menu 6 for analyze graph and this time we're looking at 2 for minimum and again it asks me for a lower bound and an upper bound so I just need to scroll somewhere to the left of the minimum and somewhere to the right of the minimum and again it will place a point with coordinates and you can move that point around if you so wish. The other key point we would want to find if we were drawing this graph would be the y-intercept. Now obviously this is one of those situations where it is far quicker for me in my head to work out the y-intercept than it will be for me to get my CAS to do it. Also um, we have to use graph trace to find y-intercepts, it's the only way to do it um, and we'll talk more about graph trace in the next video so I might leave that for now. Okay let's clear this graph and have a look at a slightly different one with some different features that we might be interested in. So the quickest way to clear the screen in the graphing module is to simply press delete three times it'll ask you are you sure you want to delete everything yes and I start again so I'm going to press tab to open my entry line and this time I'm going to use a cubic so I'm going to type x cubed minus 9x squared plus 27x and minus 26 oh sorry not equals minus 26 enter to graph and you'll see this is a cubic with a point of inflection so again in identifying key points on this graph, just move that somewhere where we can actually read it, um, I've got a, an x-intercept, so a 0, so menu 6, 1 for 0, somewhere to the left, somewhere to the right, there's my x-intercept, and again this time I'm interested in a point of inflection, so menu 6 and 5 for inflection. 
So somewhere to the left, somewhere to the right, and you'll see we get our inflection point. Again, I can move those coordinates so I can read them more clearly. Um, let's just have a look at a third situation. So again, I'm going to delete this by pressing delete three times. Yes. Uh, I'm just going to draw two linear graphs this time. So we'll just look at simple y equals x, and we'll also look at y equals 4 minus x. So two very simple linear equations. Um, here, there are a couple of things um, to be wary of when you've got two functions. So first things, if I were to find the x-intercepts, which again, easier to do by hand if you're dealing with linear equations, but if I wanted to, so menu 6, 1 for zeros, it asks me a different question now. The first thing it's going to ask me is which graph are you trying to find the x-intercept for? So whenever you've got more than one graph, it will ask you this. You can select the graph by just clicking on it, um, and then choose somewhere to the left and somewhere to the right um, to find that point. Um, the other reason I wanted to show you with two graphs is because something else we might be interested in would be menu 6 and this time 4 for intersection. So we're looking at the intersection point between these two graphs. So again it will ask me for a lower and upper bound, so somewhere to the left of the intersection point, somewhere to the right of the intersection point, and I find that these two graphs intersect at the point 2, 2. Um, so that's the end of our video on using Analyze Graph. Stay tuned for the next video where we will look at how to use Graph Trace to find um, the same points and also there are some other advantages to using Graph Trace.